The other big story that we are tracking here, which is a Headlines Today exclusive. Intelligence agencies warn the Indian government of China uniting terror groups in the northeastern states. Now, intelligence agencies have reports of meeting of representatives of nine groups organized in Myanmar. Recent attack on the army vehicle in Nagaland's Mon district has taken place after that Myanmar meeting. Now, NSCN Kaplan and Alpha faction led by Paresh Barua have come together to form a new unified terror command center. Parts of the stunning report have in fact been accessed by headlines today, which uh, our uh, strategic, strategic affairs uh, editor Gaurav Savant is going to get you in just a short moment from now. Now, headlines today, uh, this report that headlines today has accessed indicates tension in the northeast could escalate with renewed foreign push to terror. Foreign push also known as, uh, you know, uh, foreign push as far as terror is concerned, uh, aided and abetted by China. The security sources said Chinese intelligence played an active role in the encouragement and encouraging of the northeastern groups to come together on a common platform. NSCNK unilaterally abrogated, remember, the ceasefire signed with the central government in the year 2001. Let me first go across to uh, come across to you, Gaurav. Uh, if you could just explain in greater detail what really have the intelligence agencies told the establishment about China's role? Because it's not just very disturbing to hear this uh, from the intelligence agency. It's also disturbing about the fact that uh, our prime minister is making a pitch diplomatic pitch with China. He's expected to go to China in about a week's time from now. And at a time like this, this is massive provocation. Should this then be taken up with China very, very firmly? Just take us through number one, what the report says. The report very clearly talks about how terror was not doing as well as uh, anti-India establishment wanted it to do. There was a meeting that took place in Sagyang region of Myanmar, mm. where nine terrorist organizations, including NSCNK, and Alpha, they were brought together, they were all brought together on one single platform. Mm. Uh, unfortunately for anti-India elements... When did this happen? This happened sometimes in end March, early April okay. is where the intelligence That's report came That's very recent then? Very recent mm. and the impact is visible. There have been two attacks uh, on, on the Indian mm. establishment, uh, one in Arunachal Pradesh and that is why AFSPA had to be extended to the border districts mm. uh, and nine of those border districts uh, when three soldiers were killed there and now uh, when an IED blast happened in the Mon district uh, in, in Nagaland, again that was the NSCNK faction which unilaterally mm. abrogated uh, the ceasefire with the state um, sometimes in mid-April. Now all of this goes on to indicate that they are not just being armed and trained but also funded now and being brought together under what is an, an umbrella organization uh, that is called the United uh, uh, Terror Group of West Southeast Asia. Okay. So when all these terror groups come together they have a chance against the Indian state. The biggest problem they're facing is Bangladesh is supporting India, Bangladesh is not giving them a mm. safe haven, neither is Myanmar nor is Bhutan. So mm. that is why it's in an area of uh, Myanmar where the state power is relatively weak. Mm. That is where these terror groups meet and that is where they're trying to once again revitalize themselves. Okay. This seems to be a pretty comprehensive report, uh, Brigadier Mahalingam, where the government perhaps in terms of intelligence is aware of what China's design really is. What really then should be the response? Because India believes in diplomatic talk and because our Prime Minister is actually going there, should this then dominate the main focus as far as his visit is concerned rather than, uh, you know, trade and uh, other things are concerned. They are also important, but so is it, national it, security. It should, it should be a point of focus as far as Narendra Modi is concerned. Having said that, I view this as a collusion between China and Pakistan because okay. if you see the Pakistan is interested in infiltrating people f from across Bangladesh into Assam and create problems there. Mm. They have been doing this all along. But after the present government came into Bangladesh, this has been reduced to a considerable extent. If you see the pattern, the pattern is generally when there is nothing happening from the Bangladesh side. The Chinese step up their operations from the Myanmar side. Mm -hmm. Now, what is happening, if you see the uh, two parties which he mentioned very specifically, one is NSCN, the other one is the... Ulfa. Uh, uh, Ulfa. The Parish Barua faction the of the Ulfa. NSCN yeah. belongs to the Nagaland ca category. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if you see the whole thing, it is a sort of a um, uh, 
uh, it's sort of a collusion. Now let me tell you why this is happening. Now if you look at the map, that India, the northeast stands mm. out separately as a, some sort of an island mm. with China in the north, just closely with the uh, uh, with um, Arunachal Pradesh. On the east, you have the Myanmar. The southwest, you have the Bangladesh, and northwest, you have um, um, uh, um, um, Bhutan. Mm. Now, unfortunately, Bhutan has cracked upon the ter terrorists. Similarly, ba Bangladesh has done it. Bhutan in 2003 and Bangladesh after 2008. Mm. So therefore, now the other aspect which you have to see is this island which I mentioned is linked to India or the other parts of the country through a very, very narrow corridor mm -hmm. which is called the Siliguri Corridor which is strategically very important. Okay. Now if you see the border overall, the entire border, if you see, it's uh, roughly about 5,200 kilometers mm -hmm. and the India portion is less than 2%. Therefore, China realizes that there is a strategic sort of uh, weakness mm -hmm. in India's, um, uh, this particular area. And add to this, the infiltrations which have taken place in the uh, Assam area, mm. the India has not been able to do anything. Mm -hmm. In fact, we have absorbed some mm -hmm. of these people. Mm -hmm. And secondly, China has a lot of economic interest in Myanmar, mm -hmm. besides its need for an entry mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the Indian Ocean. The, uh, you must be aware that uh, approximately 2,800 kilometers long petrol come gas pipeline from Myanmar goes to China. Mm. So therefore, China is viewing the whole thing as a strategic weakness in, in mm. India. Mm. It wants to disturb India and so and create a opening for it for uh, sort of an offensive. That is precisely the reason why the BCIM corridor, B B Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar corridor, which is just suggesting so that it opens up an entry to India through Myanmar, mm. China, Myanmar, India. Mm. So this basically is the pattern and China wants to disturb you and create sort of a situation. No, no, but then what should be our response? You have given a very our detailed analysis of what you think is perhaps, uh, uh, you know, the reality in that particular area, how China is trying to dominate. But Gaurav, I will, uh, Gaurav and Brigadier Mahalingal, I'm, I'll, I'll come across you in just a short moment from now. This is time for a short break. But we will try and understand whether diplomatically uh, Narendra Modi is going to reflect upon all these concerns when he goes to China next. Back in a moment. Welcome back. The big headlines today exclusive that we are breaking at this moment. Intelligence agencies have warned the Indian government of China uniting terror groups in the northeastern states. Intelligence agencies have reports of meeting of representatives of nine groups organized in Myanmar. Recent attack on army vehicle in Nagaland's Mon district has taken place after the Myanmar meeting. The NSC and Kaplang and the Ulfa faction led by Paresh Barua have come together to form a new unified terror command center. Parts of the stunning report have in fact been accessed by headlines today, which we are in fact talking about at this moment, that indicates tension in the northeast could be escalated with renewed foreign push to terror. The security sources say that Chinese intelligence played an active role in encouraging the northeastern groups to come together on a common platform. Let me come across to you, Gaurav, uh, for one last question before we wrap up this bulletin. Uh, how much uh, a concern or a matter of concern is this really the fact that all these terror groups as many as nine of them have now formed a unified command structure which means that the power of these terror or the devastation powers of these terror groups which was divided in nine parts is now unified and all being done by china it's it's a there's clear and present danger now what this means is the moment the army the paramilitary forces or the central police organizations in one state mount an offensive these terrorists could try and slip into the other state and that is why the state will have to come with a policy that pans these seven sisters so that you could go after them in one major offensive and this would also perhaps mean that you need a lot of cooperation from countries like Myanmar Bhutan and Bangladesh which India has been getting that's point one point two AFSPA has 
already been put in place in parts of Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, a unified offensive is being planned. Uh, this is still in its nascent stage. Now, as far as Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to China is concerned, while this perhaps would be one of the issues that would be taken up, the relationship is much wider. And this isn't just a single point issue. If you recall, even when the Chinese President uh, Xi Jinping came to India, while there was an intrusion uh, uh, at, at Chumar, while there was a standoff, there were other the right. aspects of the relationship that was taken up. The same will happen even now. India will effectively deal with its security aspect mm. at the same time, whether it's trade, commerce, infrastructure, all of that is also important. Now, does this have the blessings of Beijing? Uh, that, or is that, this that, the Chinese the main point. army Absolutely. operating uh, or elements within the no, Chinese army? No, but then what is the Chinese army? What is the Chinese army? That is also the blessing of Beijing only. Uh, they, you know, there was a little uh, tussle for power even within China. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, Xi Jinping is now fully in control, but this would also reflect very poorly on his leadership because this is a leadership in India that does not brush things under the carpet. Absolutely. It's out in the open. It's being debated. In Chumar, if you had a thousand Chinese troops, you had a thousand plus Indian troops. Mm -hmm. And that standoff continued as long as the other side mm -hmm. continued. So there's a new message that's also going Bri out Brigadi from India. Brigadi Brigadier Mahalingam, my uh, final question to you before we wrap up this uh, particular point portion of first up. If India chooses to take this matter up diplomatically in the meeting that is scheduled when Prime Minister Narendra Modi actually goes there, India obviously will be dealing with the political establishment. How convincing do you think uh, should this argument be for India that uh, China is unaware or they would say that we do not know, we are not aiding and abetting something like this and we are not aware. That's almost like denial. Then this is the very same argument that Pakistan also gives on diplomatic platforms. It's absolutely, you are absolutely correct. The point that we have to understand is that India has not been able to manage this northeastern borders properly. The first most important thing that needs to be done is to manage the borders, stop infiltration and create a mechanism for collecting intelligence. Now, for example, the war state army, which in on the ground Absolutely. and uh, prolonged operations, which we must take a time frame Absolutely. of at least 10 years. Two-pronged two approach uh, that uh, Gaurav and Brigadier Mahalingam are actually talking about. One is diplomatically taking this matter up and secondly, as Brigadier Mahalingam said, boots on the ground approach to actually tackle with something that could perhaps go on to become the big northeastern menace. Many thanks uh, for joining us uh, on this particular story, Brigadier Mahalingam and also Gaurav Savan for getting us this exclusive report. It's time for a short break on First Up, but we'll be back with a lot of news and updates uh, on the other side.